See, there, there are three types of people. They're winners, they're losers, and they're winners who've not discovered how to win. And they keep on knocking their head up against the wall. They, they keep on frustrating themselves. They keep on making the same mistakes over and over and over again. They are stuck. Why? Because they don't know what they don't know and they think they know. You can't see the picture when you're in the frame. That's where mentoring comes in. That's where coaching comes in. I want you to write this down. Get some help. Yeah, because you don't know what you don't know. The worst combination in the world that I think that I don't deal with is arrogance and ignorance. You see it in your children all the time. They think they know and they don't know. I remember my son, John Leslie, we had an argument and he said, listen to me. I said, excuse me, how long you been on the planet? How old are you? You're 15. You're 15. I'm several times older than that. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Is it possible that I might know some stuff that you don't know? You just got here 15 years ago. That can be helpful to you. There's a book called The Kabbalion. He said, the lips of the wise are sealed to the ears of the ignorant. See, there's some things that we know, some things that we try and prevent our kids from making the same mistakes that we did. And the louder we speak, the faster they run toward danger, toward their friends. Isn't that interesting? Have you ever given somebody some advice based upon your experience, your observation, and they got mad with you. They got upset with you because you didn't agree with the, the behavior that they were engaged in where they were sabotaging themselves, where they were making short-term decisions that had long-term consequences. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Have you observed that with a friend or a relative? See, here's what I know. And that won't happen by accident. That won't happen by affirmations. No. You have to have a new mindset. Let that mind be in you. You got to have another mindset. Your best thinking has produced a life and the results that you now have. Where you are right now, your thoughts have brought you. Where you can go when you upgrade your thinking, your thoughts can take you. And so uh, I'm encouraging you, got something for you. And, and part of it is you want to work on and develop you. You've got to up your game on your program for you. The things that, that you're gonna fortify yourself so you can be ready for the fight. Because if we don't know anything else, here's what we learned. It ain't all about the vision. You gotta be ready to fight. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. In order to stand, you got to know you in a fight. Most people don't know you in a fight. You know, in school, you know, one of the first things they need to teach us in school, that life is a fight for territory, for peace of mind, for health, for your relationships, for your family, for the kind of life that you want to live. Reading, writing, and arithmetic, oh, that's nice. And that can't take you where you want to go. You can survive on that, but you can't live on that. You have to have an expanded vision of yourself. You've got to get ready to deal. Life, it's fascinating. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. It's a fight for territory. Life is about transformation. Life, it's about disruptions. Life, it's about miracles. You, you are here to grow. You must die daily to who you are so you can give birth to who you are to become. And there will be interruptions along the way. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. That's all I got to say about that. And it's about miracles. You have miracle working power. The fact that you're still here. So this is different. This is very, very different. And, and so... As you look at yourself, look at your goals, look at your dreams, you got to have a game plan for you. You got to have a game plan for your mind. We do what we want to do, buy what we want, beg for what we need. I remember a guy told me, man, I got this seminar you ought to come to. His name was Ed Foreman, executive development in Plano, Texas, right outside of Dallas. I said, man, 
I'm taking care of my mother. I don't have any job, anything. I'm looking at becoming a professional speaker. I, I can't afford your rates. And he said, then you can't afford not to do it. How are you going to teach somebody to do something that you haven't done? I don't understand that. How are you going to tell people how to operate out of their comfort zone and you are not willing to reach beyond your comfort zone to make this happen? How are you going to teach people how to be a no matter what person and you're coming up with saying, I don't have it. You don't have it. Get it. I got it. If you're hungry, if you're serious, if you mean to win, if your life has been interrupted, if you want to have a transformative impact, on the results that you're producing in your life. If you want to rob the cemetery of your gifts, of your genius, of your leadership, of your talent, you got to get a running star. When you want to transform your life, when you are dealing with some interruptions that you did not see coming, you got to tap into your miracle working power. That's your superpower. You have miracle working power. That's why the book of life says, I has not seen ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. When you are serious about taking your life to the next level to get it done, are you serious? Are you ready to get some stuff done that you didn't get done this year? And here's, here's one of the main things I want you to do. Follow the protocol. Practice social distancing from people and the refrigerator. And I want to ask you a question. What's your strategy for being here? You are not here to live a small life. You are here to bear much fruit and you got to live life like you mean it. You got to be serious about being happy, being joyful, having your health, having great relationships, living a life that you feel good about, a life that you're proud of. Now there's a difference between surviving and living you think it's the same? If, if you believe there's a difference between living life on your terms or surviving with the life that has been given you in this place where we are, this is not normal. This is strange. We're waiting for the next shoe to drop. If you agree with me that life, your life matters, your dreams matter, your talents matter, and you must treat them like they matter. And you have to create a movement and you are the movement. You've got to organize and have some collaborative achievement driven relationships that will help you get it done. And, and trust me on this. If you go through the Internet, you see all kind of people dancing to Master KG's song. You see the majority of the stuff that's out there is craziness for this platform. What an incredible platform to educate our kids. Our kids are being left behind. Did you know that? Because of what's going on, they're being left behind. Should we settle for that and look at the news and say, oh, isn't that awful? No, we got to step up and say, no, we're going to deal with this. There will be an intervention from us. We ain't talking about no Russian intervention. There will be an intervention from us. You think I'm going to leave my kids, my grandchildren? in the hands of the public school to educate them. No, I'm going to compliment. I'm going to intervene to make sure that they have a winning shot, that they have a, an ability to be able to live their dreams rather than self-destructive behavior. I'm going to make sure they're mentally healthy by creating a healthy environment. I'm going to be intentional about that, being mindful of my mouth, what I say around them. And when I'm talking to people, they hear, they got big ears. They watch and mimic everything. I have a friend, she's always doing this to her head because of her hair, you know, one of her weave, she's always doing this. And her little two and a half year old granddaughter, she's walking down the hall, no, she's doing this. <laughs> she ain't had no weave on, she's just doing this. Why? Why? She saw her grandmother do it. They watch us, they watch us. And then when we are uncertain, when we don't have a plan of action, when we're not standing strong, when we don't have a spirit of optimism, when we're not joyful, all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. When we're not answering the call on our life, they're watching us. We're examples for them. Our energy, 
our behavior, the choices we make, they see it. We're not in this by ourselves. I'm going to create a movement around this, helping people learn the things they did not teach us in school. They did not teach you self-awareness, how to get to know yourself, how to not allow the programming of being in a culture that marginalizes you, that denies you access to your identity so that you don't have a positive sense of self, that does not provide a curriculum that gives your life a sense of purpose and vision and methods and techniques on how to build a life of significance. Things we should have learned in school, that life has value. We need to learn that, our kids, early on.